Hello, and welcome to Film Independent Presents. I'm Rachel Bleemer, Director of Events for Film Independent. Before we get started with today's very exciting Q&A, I have to give some support to our loyal supporters. Uh, thank you for the incredible uh, uh, support from Hollywood Foreign Press Association and our screening partner, Vision Media. And with that, I'm honored to introduce today's guest moderator. Please help me welcome Kelly Curtis. Kelly, please take it from here. Hello, good afternoon and welcome. Today I'm moderating a conversation for the Film Independent, which of course produces the Film Independent Spirit Awards, which recognizes the finest achievements of American independent filmmakers. Film Independent recently broke into covering the awards television series space and has a history of recognizing auteur and character-driven stories, which of course brings us to today's panel. I'm Kelly Carter, Senior Entertainment Reporter for ESPN's Undefeated. It's my absolute honor to moderate a conversation with the creators and cast of Stars' most excellent new series, BMF. When we was growing up, we wanted to be like Young Boys Incorporated. All them dudes had money, women, clothes, and fly whips. But more than anything, they had respect. Letting my brother in the car with me that day took us on a journey beyond our wildest imaginations. Man, we got a product that creates its own demand. As long as we got my vision and your brains, can't nobody mess with us, man. And without further ado, I want to bring in this excellent team. I want to start with Curtis 50 Cent Jackson, the executive producer and a director. Welcome. Thank you. Absolutely. Okay. Randy Huggins. What up, though, to my Detroit native, uh, who is the showrunner and executive producer and writer for this series? What up, though? What up, though? Da Vinci, who is Terry Southwest T. Flannery. Hello, Da Vinci. What up, though? What up, though? What up, though? <laughs> Hello, Nicole Brianna White, uh, who's the matriarch, uh, Lucille Flannery in the series. What up, though? What up, though? <laughs> <laughs> what up, though, to Steve Harris, who is Detective Bryant in BMF? What up, though? Hello. <laughs> and last but most certainly not least, what up, though, to Demetrius Little Meach Flannery Jr., who is the son of Demetrius Big Meech Flannery, whom he portrays in the series. What up, though, little Meech? Yeah, what up, though? <laughs> so, you know, I have shared this with 50 before, but as a woman originally from Detroit, I've been waiting for at least 15 years for someone to bring this story to life. I always thought it would work so well as a film, but my God, it works so much better told in serial form. Randy, I want to start with you. At what point did this come to you as a project? And what was it about this story that worked for you and made you want to create? Uh, 50 and I worked together on Power the first three mm -hmm. seasons. And I think season three, I was leaving and he, I was working on an episode with him. And he was like, yo, I got the BMF joint. So I'm sitting there like I know he's about to ask me to do it. But he didn't. You know what I mean? He had two other guys. So I left and I went and did like a couple other shows and he called me like two years later and he like, yo, what's up? You want to do it? And I'm like, heck yeah. You know what I mean? So he turned me on to Meech and we started talking and I'm visiting him in prison for like, you know, three or four times. And uh, what really made me want to do this was that um, once I started talking to Meech, I found out that this was more than like a drug show, sort of, you know, sort of speak. It was really a show about family, about brotherhood, about love and about spirituality. And it was a show about Detroit. And I think that's one of the biggest things I wanted to do, make Detroit a character the same way uh, Baltimore is a character in The Wire, LA is a character in Snowfall. So it was an opportunity for me to bring my, uh, shine some light on my hometown, as well as these two brothers who were probably the most, uh, the biggest two street legends to ever come out of the city. Yeah, absolutely. 50, why was now the right time to tell the stories? You know, Randy just said that y'all have been talking about this for several years before we actually saw it. Why is now the time? Well, the, the stars lined up for us and as far as the cast is concerned. Like, it, for it all fell together in perfect timing because, the like, I had this series, I, well, I sold it to stars four and a half years ago. So... The process, uh, it allowed me to, to make choices that are not traditional choices as far as getting the, the, the crew together for it. And then, you know, like I was able to get Steve and Wood in the, in the frame at one time. Like, that's like, look, this is magic. Like, this is, and then 
to give McCole and Russell working together that already have a prior history of working and, and making moments that you couldn't, you don't even have to put it on the page. These things are, the lines were written, but what you see in performance, you can't put that there without Russell and McCole there. You know, and then there's a different energy, even even Miles, the characters that already uh, already died off to the show, they, they brought things like, his scene didn't have the, the spritz or the hairspray in it. It was something that he brought to it that, that added humor to the moment. Yeah. And, you know, like it, these are extremely talented people with a cast. It makes me look like a genius later. <laughs> you know, the story organically coming from a fictional story, uh, a crime, drama, family related story in power to a, a true story. And the difference is, and, and the true story is spirituality, is, is Christianity. That's mm -hmm. the, the theme that runs through the show. There isn't in the other Raising Canaan or in uh, Ghosts or any of these shows. Yeah. So, you know, I can't say enough how well done BMF is. And I know that Randy is from Detroit. And, and to me, once I saw that, once I knew that, that's why the, the entire series felt so authentic to me and really like the most authentic piece of work I've seen about my hometown um, in decades. Um, I wanna bring in the actors here because by now you guys know that people not only back home are appreciating the nuances and the need to not over explain Detroit in a way we don't ever get to see happen in Hollywood, but people really just love the work that you guys do. Um, I want to know how that authenticity helped you guys with your performances and, and what that was like uh, for you guys as you were bringing these very real characters to life. Uh, why don't we start with you, uh, Little Meech? Uh, it was amazing just bringing my character to life just because it was my dad. And yeah. he actually, you know, put me in acting classes so I could learn how to be an actor. So it was different, you know, me just jumping in for the first time. And I have to, you know, learn the childhood history of how my dad grew up. You know, we grew up two totally different lifestyles. So me having to play him at that young and detrimental time of Detroit, you know, in the 1980s back then, it, it was different. So me just, uh, you know, developing that and, and you know, and, and using what my dad was telling me every day <clears throat> to my <clears throat> to my ability, it was, you know, just like basically just, just so helpful for me and, and so and it made me comfortable in, in what I was doing. Yeah, and he, and he asked about, when I brought yeah. up. When he found out that Meech was asked that I wanted him to play the character. He yeah. was like, "Oh, can he, can he act?" Because he didn't even know that I had already sent him to like we we kept that from him yeah. for a good portion of the time until yeah. he, we I knew he could actually make the cut. Like after we got so many progress reports, I was excited by it. And the team of the cast, everyone that's around him is why he's receiving the praise that he's receiving because yeah. it's the strongest support system of talented artists around him that made him look things that would would specifically he said something to him that it stuck with me. I took it with me. He said perform with listening eyes. Remember we was on the on that call? Yeah. Yep. Like yep. Everything that that was being said, I was saying, yo, you gotta pay attention to it, listen to what they're saying, because they know what they're doing, they've been doing this the entire time. You know what I'm saying? But from there, and, and then performance later. It's great, like, you know, as soon as you walk out, because culturally, he's a part of what's hip already. Mm -hmm. So it, mm -hmm. it gives the show a life that other television shows don't have when he's out and he's moving around, he's on premise in different places and people get to touch and feel him in a different way. And, and it's almost like he's he's a, a new version of what his dad was at that point because he'd be shining, he'd be having all these diamonds on everything. And I got, we gotta get the Vinci out there because he's not, he's not really like, feel like that, but we're gonna, we're gonna get that going. <laughs> like I'm trying to ask Meech for one of the chains, but Meech don't want to give it to me. <laughs> he, said, he said, I'm the little brother, I'm too young, so. I'm like, oh, that's <laughs> funny. Well, you know, uh, 50, you're absolutely right in that uh, this, this uh, series is just stacked with really excellent um, talent. I want to bring in Steve Harris and McCole because uh, you guys, you know, you guys have, have been doing this for a while. I know, Nicole, you're also a Broadway queen. But but talk to me about, you know, bringing these characters to life, especially, you know, with how authentic this story is to what was that like for you guys as actors working on this project? Um, I'll, I'll say for me, um, I just want to start off by saying I'm so honored 
um, to be a part of this product project and um, and to play Miss Lucille and to have the opportunity to play someone, a, a real person that I actually get to talk to who's with us. That's, I've never had that experience before. And um, um, so that was really um, amazing to me to be able to, you know, talk to her even in between scenes and, and things and have her send me, you know, she would send me Bible verses, you know, in between or to help uh, encourage me when I felt nervous or whatever, sometimes even. And, um, and just, you know, the story itself is just so authentic. And it's also an honor to be able to um, stand with Lil Meech and uh, help usher him into this world um, and, and playing his father to really support him through this journey has been really um, amazing. And um, with all of these um, young people that we're working with, it's just been a joy and an honor uh, and Da Vinci as well to just be able to support them and, and help lift them up into this new place. And um, anyway, it's just all been amazing. I, I can't even find all the words, it's extraordinary. Yeah. Steve, how about yourself? Yeah, if you did a good job, the words though. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <she did. laughs> uh, let me just say, uh, uh, so first off, I wanted to do this. You know what I mean? When they, when they brought it to me, man, you remember when we was talking the first thing, I, I had a couple questions that I want to have asked. One, one was I wanted Detroit to be there and be alive because we, I'm from Chicago, which is yes. you know, a better part of the Midwest, but we ain't talking about that. Right? <laughs> uh, but, uh, uh, but I wanted to be a part of it because I knew I, I knew the story. I knew the people, you know, it was a time when I was doing my thing. So I really wanted to be a part of it. And then when you when you actually get to the fact that you include my brother in it, who was talking to me even before they came, yo, man, he hit me up on the phone like, hey, this is blah, 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 blah. And I was like, okay, blah, 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 blah. Let me hear what they got to say. And uh, and then we got to rapping. And it was, it was uh, as, I, as I told Randy, and, and I ain't told 50 yet, but it was, it, it's, one of the highlights of my career, I've been around for a minute, the opportunity to play opposite my brother was such a big deal. And I didn't even know how, how much of a, a deal it was going to be. And then to actually tell this story to me, I think it's important for us to get the story out. I don't think we should be running away from our stories. This is one of our stories. And I think we, we should tell it. And like I said, my, my character, I think is a blend of a few cats from that day. Mm -hmm. um, in order to make it happen. Uh, I'm always trying to find something that makes people uncomfortable when I do it. This, he makes people uncomfortable. Um, mm -hmm. I think the history of my sort of career is uh, I'm the one you love to hate, kind of, sometimes. So <laughs> I sort of relish in that shit. I kind of sorry, relish in that stuff. I kind of like it. Kinda. <laughs> uh, so, you know, uh, I just want I, I want to say, and, and, and I want to say something to add on to Nicole already said so eloquently, the, the young cats bringing in that fuel, bringing in that young energy during a time of a pandemic when they kind of trying to lock you out and all of this other stuff you're trying to do in order to make that happen. You need that fuel. And the, the drive and the hustle that these cats were doing on the show um, really helped keep everything going and everybody sort of fired up. You know what I mean? When you've been around for a minute, you, that young thing to go along with the vets, that was a great combination. Um, Fidu is right on point when he said it earlier. You know, he had a plan, an idea. He was very modest with it this time, which, you know, uh, but, but his plan came through. You know, he put people around. The young cats bring that energy and talent. I don't want to leave out talent mm -hmm. uh, to both the you cats as well as other members on the show that I've said before. And you bring that all together, you end up having the success that this show had. Mm -hmm. or has I should say right. and hopefully will continue to have and that that commitment that started four and a half years ago with them two cats mm -hmm. to actually put the best piece out there to represent Detroit as mm -hmm. well as BMF um sometimes the weight is righteous yeah. and I think the weight was righteous 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, let's bring in one of those young cats that was on the set. Da Vinci, talk to Hello. me. Talk to me about, you know, bringing bringing T, um, the younger version of T to life in this series. And because he really also felt like you, you couldn't have told me this dude was from uh, Southwest Detroit, uh, the way that you <laughs> brought him, <laughs> the way that you brought him life. Real authentic. Uh, real authentic. Uh, I, I, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I mean, first off, I just... Honestly, I, I appreciate, you know, 50 and, and Randy for even like having this opportunity created for me to even, you know, hop on board on a project like this, you know, because I mean, it's very seldom in an actor's career you get to play a real life story, you know what I'm saying? And, and the character that I'm playing, like he's still alive, which is dope. And mm-hmm. I was nervous and I was in my head about it because like in the beginning, like, you know, you know, Tasha was like drilling my head, you know what I'm saying? Because she was so passionate about the work and I'm like, damn, I don't fuck up. I'm hearing like all these like notes and these opinions and I'm like, damn, I don't even know what the real Terry is going to think, you know what I'm saying, uh, about my performance. But, you know, I remember after like the third episode came out, he reached out to me. He was like, yo, man, like you, 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 you killing it. And like, he was paying me homage on that, on how I portrayed him. And I was like, yo, this is, this is like, this is like, it's like, I want to end it. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I'm hearing it from the man himself. You know what I'm saying? Like everyone else's opinion. It matters, but it don't matter as much as him. Because as a dude, you know what I'm saying? If you're watching yourself being played like by another dude, you know what I'm saying? You just think in that male type of way. And, and he was just like, yo, I'm, I'm blown by the performance. You know what I'm saying? And and, and um, I just, honestly, the way I locked in, I had a rough upbringing. You know what I'm saying? I grew up in Brooklyn, Flatbush, and, and in Orange, East Orange, New Jersey. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't the best area. And uh, I just drew from that. And, Every hood is the same, you know what I'm saying? It's a little different. The lingo is different, but at the same, really, it, it, it's the same spirit. Like, every ghetto is the same. So I just tapped into that. And mm. I know Brooklyn will cross over so well with Detroit, but uh, <laughs> you know I've I never, I never been in Detroit before in my life, you know what I'm saying? So only thing I was saying was, what up, though? And I sit and wear the little high tops that they wore but in the top tens. But I was, I was really just in my Brooklyn mindset from, you know, how I grew up. And then, mm. you know, I just took notes from from 50 from randy from tosh from everyone else and and a little meach it was it was it was a blessing starring alongside him because he's the source he was a plug so he's like my personal google so i'm like yo yeah. bro is this shit real is this da, da, da? and he's like you know putting me on game how things was so it just it was the right recipe and then you know we had the veterans you got steve you got mccall you got wood you got you know what i'm saying russell so it's like it, it it's like it's like steve was saying it, it was the right recipe and that four and a half years wait i definitely think it was righteous you know what i'm saying it, it was genius it, this was like a banger like you know how 50 be making the hit records like this was, <laughs> he, he, he used that same formula for tv and it's just genius it's just like how the hell this is like in the club you know what i'm saying <laughs> it, was, it was perfect you know what i'm saying so it was the club yeah you know i love that you said that because the thing that's so interesting about 50 is that he is a storyteller he's a rapper he's an actor he's a producer and he knows this i'm very interested in and how you see the world through television because i'm loving the things that you are getting behind but now you're also a director what made you want to direct this episode in bmf and and what did you kind of use to to help push these actors to give us this really great work that we see in this episode well, it was for me. It was a, for my first time directing. I directed on Power, yeah, in in uh, season six. And mm-hmm. following that, you know, I I made sure that I wasn't directing until it was a later episode in the show. I was mm-hmm. episode seven of eight, mm-hmm. and by then the cast kind of meshes together. They get into a groove. Everybody is comfortable with how they're shooting it. Even the director of photography is already aligned himself with how we're actually shooting the show. So I wouldn't be coming in and doing anything drastic to change the actual show. Just add little things that I see in films. Like I hate when the, the shots are static shots. Like they're just over the show, they're the same old thing and you, you just listen hearing the dialogue. So I, I want to see the camera move, do different things that make it exciting for me. So I feel like something's happening. Then mm. I got to be paying attention to it. If there's no just the project alone, communicating with the actors, I already had that relationship. Mm. So it's was, it was comfortable. I think a big part of, of getting the right performance is just being able to communicate what you're trying to, to see in the scene. And the talent is there. They they didn't require much at that point, like to be honest. Yeah. They, they just make me look great. 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like it's just like that. Like I would say, stay to Steve when it, while we doing the scenes. I said, what, "What you think about this? Like how you feel about the the scene itself when we when we actually go on?" Because and and it, I think that provides a different comfort because sometimes there's people that don't have as much information about the scene or, or a vision for it that are directing you at points. Mm-hmm. They don't. They haven't dug yeah. into it the same way that the, the acting talent has. And then when you you're able to let we got that. Now this is yours. Do you know? Do what you feel like with this scene. Like you know, what I mean, offer yeah. something different, and the comfortability of being able to for them to knowing that these are the people that you put in this position because you know they know what they're doing already. Mm-hmm. Not that it's a it's a, a point where we auditioning for the scene because you're trying to make some shit that actually isn't on the paper yeah. at that point, <laughs> and, and that, that let it allowed it to be a smooth. Transition. I had interesting things happen too at the same time because being a producer and, and being invested in the entire show, we lost the entire locations department during me directing. Mm-hmm. You know, we had some issues and I had to go and communicate with them. And it's a good thing that I just used them as a director to communicate with them to, to get all the locations locked down for episode seven because the director for episode eight has spun the entire team off of the, off of the show. Right. So I had to go get them the back and we just transitioned into doing what we had to do from there. But this is this has been a roller coaster the entire way. And the payoff is amazing. I think Randy is probably look, his this experience, there's no one running the show right now that had the same experience as yeah. this big up show. Trust me. It's, it's just not even close. I believe you. I believe you. You know, this next question um, is actually for Randy and 50 and maybe in some small ways, uh, little Meech, considering that he's playing his dad. And look, I'm not trying to get anybody in trouble. Let me just say that right now. But how much of what we see is fact versus fiction? And how did you guys decide what to fictionalize and what to keep as true to the story as possible? Um, but I'm not I'm trying sorry. to get anybody in trouble. No, no. I'll start off. I mean, that's, a, that's, a, that's a reasonable, definitely a great question. Yeah. Um, and I'll just start off by saying, I still spend. I mean, I got an email this morning. So, I mean, I spend like every day, you know what I mean, talking to Big Meat. And uh, mm-hmm. so there's not a storyline in here that isn't based on something I heard. You know right. what I mean? But that mm-hmm. said, I'm a drama writer. Not, I'm not telling a documentary. So yeah. a documentary is based off facts. Well, my job is to entertain and make people jump out their doggone seat. So certain points, I have to take a left when they went straight ahead. Or if they took a right, I'm like, nah, we got to go straight ahead. But it's still all based in stories that I have heard over the past three years from my interactions with Big Meech. And then when Terry came home, even talking to Terry and talking to uh, Miss Lucille Flannery, talking to... so. It's all rooted from the truth. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And in process, I think the you I have to tell Randy not to listen to them at points. Because they get so get so stressed out. There'd be so much information coming and they wanted to see it just they wanted to just show I the day went like this. Yeah. So put the day in like that. And you're going, no, that's not how it works, man. Mm-hmm. Like Randy, do do what, what fits the best for the show. A hundred percent. And then the rest of the rest of it, you, look, I, I'll talk to him. Don't worry about it. I'll get on the phone with him and deal with them because they don't know until they see the results. When they watch now and they see the public response to it, they go, yeah. <laughs> no, no, do it your way. Do it your way. <laughs> don't, don't listen to what I was saying. Like, you know what I mean? And you look and it's different. And Da Vinci hair grows so fast. That's a whole nother talent. <laughs> I just told him that you, I can give like, you, you a specific. It's, 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 it's that Branson, you know what I'm saying? I was just like, that shit make your hair grow, you know what I'm saying? I ain't know what I'm saying. Past mine. I ain't short, shorter than mine is five past mine. Right. Yeah, yeah. You sure they just went like that. Ready to break and join up. Now, you know, before before I wrap you guys up, and I do want to go around the Zoom on this one, um, this story is so rich and so fertile, you know, and and I had said to uh, to 50 before that I'm already ready for, you know, like 
season five, you know, because I know what's going to happen with the story. We all know how the story ends, but we're learning, obviously, how it kicked off and, and all the kind of missing parts in between. But how far in advance, Randy, have you thought about um, the story? Um, and then just would love to hear those of you who are bringing these characters to life, um, even if because we kind of know in some ways what, what happens to these characters, but what are your hopes with uh, with regard to the evolution of, of these characters that you've uh, that you've created? But Randy, let's start with you there. Um, I think I've always seen, I mean, look, a successful TV show is a show that goes five years. I've always thought we can do more than that. I mean, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? I certainly have been told by Big Meech that this is 10 years, 15 <laughs> if you don't mess it up. It's not <laughs> like so, uh, you know, um, but what's really interesting about the people you have on um, our Zoom right now, I certainly do see all of these people uh, seeing this series all the way through. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And that's one of the most interesting things about the series is that as they grow, as they expand, they're going to have new crews. You know what I mean? So it's going to be interesting. Like one of the things that I really wanted to talk about, about, uh, you know, Detroit and the culture of Detroit was musically. So we started in 86. You got to hear the techno. You know, yeah. season two will be more late 80s, 89, 88. And you're going to see the influence of music pop in there. We know mm -hmm. in season three, when he goes to Atlanta, you know that South music is going to be starting to pop. So just to go on this musical exploration is something I'm most excited uh, about seeing. And then also, like something I had to come up with, you know, breaking season two is uh, Steve Harris's character. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? This is me taking dramatic license, but I want to see him in the end. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. that will really be full circle for his relationship that he started with this young man that he coached youth baseball with. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. I'm really excited about this journey that we are on and these actors that are going to bring it to life for us. Yeah, Nicole, how about yourself? What, what about Lucille's evolution? Because she obviously is like the moral compass of the show. Um, but what, what are you kind of hoping to, to see if I get my dream of at least five seasons of the show? <laughs> oh, Lord, five seasons, I don't know. But uh, I'll say this for now. I'm looking forward to her um, really letting go mm. and um, unapologetically stepping into her power. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm looking forward to um, more scenes with the boys and, and their friends. Like that was one of the things that the real Miss Lucille talked about a lot, you know, that she would hang with them. She would cook with them for them and stuff. And really uh, she just spent a lot of time with them and listening. And she really like, was what? important to her to minister outside of the church. What you laughing at? I said cook. I said cook what? Oh. <laughs> I see what you did there. Uh, 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 Randy, write that in. <laughs> oh, don't, you, don't you make that damage the whole family doing that, Randy. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I love it. I love it. Steve, yourself? Uh, uh, man, I, I like three-dimensional mm -hmm. the character got to be full you know you got mm -hmm. you, you know i enjoy being a problem i consider i'm gonna still continue to be a problem that's mm -hmm. that's part of what i do uh i'm a little different because i'm not you know that's not it, it's based around a lot of true cats yeah. but that's not one like little me just playing his pops and da vinci's playing t so for me it had it's well-rounded you know these guys and i think this is what people don't get a lot of times guys are Guys can be killers and have a family at home, be the most loving dude you've ever seen with his family. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and we always, uh, one of the things that always beefs me is that, you know, you know, people making a lot of money look at people on the street and think they stupid. No, they ain't. Mm -hmm. People on the street with the people with, uh, doing all this kind of funny talk or whatever and thinking they ain't, no, they ain't. They just two sides of the coin. They, they, if you making it on the street, trust me, you got some sense to you. You got more than that because of how you have to deal with it. The thing is, can you play on both? Yeah. You know what I mean? That's the thing. When I play basketball, I don't put on cleats. Mm. I don't put on cleats. If I play football, I put on cleats. Can you put on the right equipment to play in both? And that's mm -hmm. kind of the dynamic of my character. He's a cop kid, do the dirt thing here. 
He got a family situation got going. Every dude should have a chick with him. You know, yeah. it's a, it's that whole thing, and all that thing has to affect what is going on. And 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 as as I'm sure uh, Randy has already done, and if y'all notice, I'm, I, I anticipate in all of this, I anticipate to be tested. Yeah. The character must be tested. That's part of it, and then the character will bring tests to it. You know what I mean? So uh, I guess that's my testament. I like that. I like you know, that. That's it. And and before we before we wrap up, uh, little Meech and Da Vinci. What about you guys? Because you guys are the two young men that we're going to be following uh, throughout the course of the series. Yeah, I can't wait just for people to see because I want to portray, you know, my dad for exactly who he is. You know, I want people to see the actual loving family man that he was. You know, he was just so smart. And he had all the obstacles against him, but, you know, he still made the best out of it. So I want people, you know, because my dad always wanted people to know the real him because there's nothing out there but documentaries that show what people know about him. This is, the, you know, the time and the chance for everybody to know what type of family he had, how he grew up, and exactly what made him do what he did. So I'm just excited for everybody to see the, you know, upcoming seasons. And like Randy said, hopefully we can go for 10. Mm-hmm. I like that. Da Vinci, and, anything to add before we go? Um, I would just, I would just like to see the the brothers not arguing as much. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think, uh, I think, you know what I'm saying? They, 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 brothers argue a lot, but I think there's some moments that they definitely was just laughing and joking, especially when they were kids. You know what I'm saying? Like they, they, mm-hmm. they wasn't arguing like 24 set, like hours in a day. Like you know, so a lot of people just. Hit me up like, damn, y'all niggas always argue. <laughs> like, yeah, and I was like, damn, now that I think of it, yeah, we are always arguing in the show and shit like that. So I, I would like to, you know, see that. But other than that, I mean, I think, you know, the way, you know, they're writing the character, I think it's, it's beautifully done. You see the layers of, you know, how he is with his family. He's trying to manage that in school and the streets. You know, I think, I think it's, I, I have no, like, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it's just the argument. That, that's all I feel like, you know what I'm saying? They could, we could chill out a little bit on our argument. <laughs> well, whatever you guys are going to gift us, uh, we are already ready for it because this first season has been really excellent. Uh, BMF people, thanks so much for doing this today. Continued success. Thank you for having us. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate, I appreciate it. Appreciate you. Thank you for having us. All right. All right yo. Good seeing all right. everyone, man. Yeah, be good, man. Good. Uh, one, one love.